slot into each other so that you can save space. But there'd be different heights, obviously. Yeah, yeah. It'd be dumb, but it could work. Adjustable height. I was thinking you can get. Oh, standing those standing bench thingies. Yeah, yeah, standing. Sit and But you can get telescopic steel, so one piece that fits inside another, so you can. Telescopic steel. So it's just two bits of steel, one that's slides inside the other, and then you just put a pin through. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend like. Hmm. I wouldn't recommend like the reason why I'm against the the whole adjustable height thing is because I do a lot of hammering on this bench. Yeah. And it'll, it'll be stress on wheel anything that has wheels and anything that has a pin. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. The force goes somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. So wheels have been. I was thinking wheels just to make it easy to move around, but wheels are just yeah at that point of weakness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I'd say just just make it keep it simple. Um, I don't. Maybe at most we would have adjustable kind of feet to make sure it doesn't wobble. Like so, so like you know we could add those on the ends, just drill through the pipe and then add the screw things. Yeah, or if it is really, I'd say the floor is pretty level here. If it's not, I'd just shim it off. Yeah. Well, like remember, we're building this thing, so there's gonna be. I'm gonna imagine there's gonna be human error somewhere. Yeah, we can always shave down the leaks though. Yeah. Turn it over, shave down. Sure. Try and get it as accurate as possible. I think we will need like an adjustment somewhere. Yeah. It'd be good. It'd be good to have like those feet, but extra, I guess. Yeah, just again, that point of weakness. We don't want to build weakness into it if we can avoid it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right. Cool. Oh, and can we put the vice on a corner, please? <laughs> yeah, we can put it wherever. Because, so like, because, like, I find, I like, let's put a vice on the corner, because that way you can turn it, you can turn it, and like have the vertical grip and the horizontal grip without having you know stuff blocked by the bench. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And being metal frame, yeah. we should be able to get really close to the edge as well. Yep. I might actually look at doing some other thing because the metal frame is going to be 50 mil. So an overhanging, an overhanging vice would be awesome. Yeah? It would be. Because like if you have an overhanging vice, if you want the bench stability, you just rotate it. But most most things, if you had a if you had a overhang vice, that means you can put like long things standing on the floor and just grip uh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Because this one wouldn't really do that, would it? it no, because the grips are like out here, and you can only get so close to the edge. You, you can only well, it's got a it's got a grip inside here. Yeah. So at some point, it's not going to work, because this this teeth. Uh, isn't over the edge. Yeah, it can get pretty close though. If we put the bolts right up on the edge. But like I said, like yeah, um, but but you had this support beam like blocking you, so that's why you couldn't drill through all of that to put yeah, bolts through. So, but if possible with the new bench, if we could get like the the vice on the edge and made sure that your your non-moving teeth are like over the edge or in line with the edge, yep. it would be yes. ideal. So is that? Just not quite close enough to the see, edge that way. See, see what I mean. So if I put like a block vertical, it's going to impact the table. Yep. So you can't have. So you can't grip long things. Yeah. Otherwise, so with, with this, if you moved, we can get to. Yeah. Yeah, we could get it. We'd have to have it really close to the edge. Really I think close. Being a metal yeah, but Frank. if you could work that into the design of the thing, that would be great. Yeah, but we should be able to do that. Because like, do it on the corner so it's as close as possible. Yeah. as close as possible to the corner. I would say like try and have these. This if you if you have like these two bolts on the edge, like that would that would work. And then have it on the corner, so you can adjust what what vertical or horizontal grip you want. Yeah. Because that's that's the mod I would make about this using this so much. Yeah, for sure. Are you, do you have a preference in metal top, wood top? Not really. Um, I think you were saying you could pick up thin metal fairly cheap. It's it's gonna be like mild steel though, so like we, so it'll be mild steel, so which means it would rust. 
Yeah, if it's not all words. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then... Oh, but if it's interfacing with MDF, well, I guess we could... And here's the thing, like, no one... Look at this, no one has even bothered to sweep this yeah, table. So what makes you think everybody, so, people are going to oil it? We, we are going to work towards having everything cleaner. We're going to have vacuums. There's going to be a dedicated vacuum for this space. There's going to be a dedicated dust bin room, even though there's meant to be one. Um, okay. And signs up reminding everyone. Just sounds a bit ambitious to me, but... Well, there, there might be a cleaning officer coming around. And, uh, <laughs> sure, sure. I really, I really, I really doubt. But anyway, yeah. it's, it's, it'll be a group effort. But I think I think everyone needs to come out. Eight. Yeah, two hundred eighty centimeters. Kind of step up and try and help keep the space a bit cleaner. I know. It's true. I, I can be a bit sloppy at times, especially down in the laser cut area. I mean, like I don't sweep sometimes, but yeah. Uh, I'll, that's what I'll, I'll be coming up and cracking the book every now and then to remind you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then if I use this space, I'll definitely make a cleaner. Make yeah. Whoever else uses the space, we'll just stay on top of it. Get, get it in everyone's habit just to keep it clean. Yeah. It's, uh, it's one of those things. Uh, mo most of like, the, the thing that bothers me the most is, is tools that go and walk about. Yeah, that's, I guess the difficulty at the moment as well is not a good home for some of the tools, yeah. but also there's... I've, um, I've commandeered one of an empty, so that's what I'm going to do at, like for the last 30 minutes of the night or something. I've commandeered a member's box that's 100% empty, so we can start looking through power tools that are just not used. Yeah, I mean... Well, sorting out the tools. Sorting out the tools. Anything that's so, broken. So that box is intended for, like, tools that aren't ready to use, like, right now, that yeah. either need fixing or throwing away. Even just... Actually, that's a good point. Yeah. Something better to organize our tools as well. Uh, I would say cabinets. So yeah. the kind mechanics use, if if yeah, that's a thing. For the cheapest yeah. option. <laughs> Okay, all right. The cheapest option is is we use all of the scrap MDF to build those cabinets. Exactly. <laughs> already, a lot of the MDF has already claimed the either workbench, probably shelves for the workbench, and then also a new top for the CNC. Yeah, okay. But yeah, anything we've got laying around or... Start building cabinets. Stuff at home, build yeah. cabinets if we can, or... More shelving. Cheap off of... Um, Facebook Marketplace or eBay or Yeah, Facebook. yeah. Uh, that or just repurpose stuff that isn't getting used, like these cabinets over here. Oh, yeah. Are going to waste. Like that's a good example of space that can be reutilized. That's a better, better use. Well, the vacuum, and I, I know the vacuum doesn't see a lot of action. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what to do with the vacuum. It works, but it's not good for this space because it's a bagless system. It's just not good for workshop stuff. All right, well, stuff. then maybe that needs to go in the box. I think it could go downstairs for the, the laser area. Oh, yeah. Uh, it'll be okay down there. Uh, and actually, maybe if we had some... Oh, that's a tiny one. This one. Yeah, we can repurpose one of the downstairs back to our here. You reckon? Um, because we've got a shop yes. back downstairs. Oh, yeah. We don't need a shop back downstairs. We need a shop back here. Now, which of these. Oh, yeah. I got like batteries for the. For the electronic calipers. I hope these are the right batteries. Oh, I... What did you think... already... Digital caliper. I was, I was going to grab them and look at what battery they were. And if you got some, then perfect. I don't know if it's the right one. So we could have. I could have just blown my money on. But I opened it up before going. And so this is completely off memory. That looks, that looks promising. It, it looks about right. It usually says... In there somewhere. Well, it fits. It works. Yeah, that'll be right then. Okay. Perfect. Because I was like, nice let's like figure out uh, the uh, the tool situation. May as well get this working again. Yeah, exactly. 
Because that was on. Um, that was in the back of my mind. It's usable again. It's awesome. We don't use the manual ones. All right. Well, I. Okay. So I'm gonna put this spare battery in the case. So, hopefully it doesn't oxidize and explode. Okay. Extra batteries in there. Is that an extra battery holder? Is that? Oh, there's all this stuff built in, and we just didn't know. Mine has one as well. It's got a similar kind of thing. Okay. Nice. 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 That's usable again. Now, now that it's usable again, like it's just going to go and walk about. I don't know. <laughs> Just needed a new battery. <clears throat> All right. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, all right, I'm, I needed a five mil thing. That's kind of what I need. I'm hoping like the rod didn't disappear. I needed a five mil rod. I hope it didn't, did it just fall over the other side and never to be seen again? All right. That's why I have these calipers. Okay, so that's four mils. It's not exactly what I was looking for. That's six and a bit. Ooh. Are you sure I had a rod around here that was five and a half? I look at my car if it's there. Six mils. Yeah. 
but um, definitely less is not. But also Yeah. Yeah, true that. Yes. Yeah, I'll be right back. Sun Devil, what's up? Would you be interested in buying some spiders? Great prices, 100% organic spiders. Uh, no, no spiders, thanks. I'll be right back. Mm. Find it. Well, I think I have some spares anyway. Should be fine. Ah, I don't think I need to spin any gold today. Right. Let's do this. Oh God. Yeah, I have a little bit to go on. This isn't good. This isn't good. This is, is that another six mils? No. Same size. Can't use these. <clears throat> um, 
Oh, wow. That's a big one. That's a second big one. I think I can use these. These are six mil. Those are too small. Hmm. I think it's the big ones that I need. Is it the big ones? Or is it the small ones? I'm pretty sure it's six mils. It says five on the uh, block. Let's see if they fit the mold. Okay, so it's definitely these ones. All right. It's the big ones that I need. Might as well just throw out all the small ones because those are too confusing. That's a big one I can use. I have to remind myself to buy a replacement rod. I can use that. Okay. Oh, all right. I forgot that's what it. I can use those. Can't use. Th I can use these. Can't use those. Finally, we're in business, kind of. Cool. I was planning to throw these out. Do you want them? All right. So these are these are coils, but you can cut them. You know how to you know how to make. Rings from coils? Uh, Pretty much. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a batch now right. if you like and I'll I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> camera. Oh well, it's fine, you can be in the camera or you do just not like cameras. Whatever. Okay. Right. Well then 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 come in. Um so I'll show you how it's done. So I have two blocks here. The reason why I can't use these is because they're the wrong diameter. So, which is why I'm using these. So first things first is you wrap these in masking tape because it'll help with the, uh, with the process first. So just, so you got the right length of masking tape. OK, 
Okay, once you got like one side stuck, not like that. But. Yeah, that's good enough. Just wrap these as best as you can. Now, I didn't do it quite so straight on, but it'll still work. Oh man, that's not gonna work at all. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, exactly. I've done these plenty of times on a camera in front of like thousand, two thousand people yet when it's in real life. Now it's also because the coil is somewhat bent. And it doesn't matter how messy you put it on as long as it's like somewhat wrapped. Okay, so once it's wrapped, it's just, we have all the tools here. Okay, just cut off the excess to get a, cl get a clean start. Here's the mold. So basically this is just a grip that will allow you to cut these easier. So you just bend it over like that. So it's good to overshoot here, but not too much. And then once you have that, so you can see like this end is not drill all the way through, so it doesn't push through. You grip the mold like that. I'm sure this is all tied up. Uh, oh, there it is. So this is the manual way of doing things. Usually like uh, Aussie ring mail would um, use like a machine. But this, this setup allows you to do it via hacksaw. So and now this is how you just cut through. So I, I, I do it this way because uh, instead of um, using pliers, because pliers pinch the end. Right. Yeah. Ow, it's hot. Is this to make chain mail? Yeah. Right. And that's how you that's how you go from that wire there to this here. Oh, wow. So yeah, um I'm planning to do like one or two coils, but then after that this bench you can use it for yourself. So um So what I know you're doing uh what armor are you doing? Uh I'm doing a so I'm making uh Kote, so that's uh, Japanese. It's like a armored sleeve. Oh, okay. cool. So it's like a sleeve that you pull over your arm. Mm -hmm. um, so as you can see, the Japanese armor there, like the the body armor, doesn't attach to the arms because the arms rope on. Right. Yeah, and that's what we're making here. Very cool. That's basically how it's done. And now you just just got to go through each coil. Uh, th that one, um, uh, a, someone gave to me, it was, um, it was like really in bad repair, but I managed to repair like that too and get to work on the helmet. Um, so this is, uh, this is a restoration job <laughs> basically, but yeah, like, um, I can't use these. So if you want them, I just showed you the price. If you want them, here's the mold for four millimeter. So that's four millimeter. If you want them, you can have them. Uh,
Okay. And at least recoup the cost of the wire and stuff like it's that. Wire is like super bit. cheap. Um, this is the hardest bit, just trying to get them out of there. Yeah. All right, those are fine. Just got to get like a. I think we have something for this. Yeah, all right, well, I don't think anyone would be bothered uh, on Medieval Marketplace, because I know that place, like they usually just look at completed stuff. Yeah, completed stuff. Um, but yeah, if you want it, yeah. I was planning to throw them away because I can't use them. So if you don't want them, I'll just throw them. Yeah, no, I always use them. Butted mail. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Pre made? Uh, no, we've got a couple of friends who are blacksmiths. Um, oh, yeah? And yeah. So, Levi, is, Levi and Anthony are both very good friends. Um, and Ant's a blacksmith at. Uh, Gold mines. Oh yeah. Um, in Bathurst at the moment, and he does his own stuff. He, he likes dragons. He likes <laughs> dragons. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the events. Um, I I do, but they're not on anymore right now. No. Um, but I want to. Well, I'm building armor because I want to do more at those events and. And uh, and participate in the full combat stuff. Oh, yeah, very cool. yeah, but yeah. no one around here sells Japanese armor, so I have to make no. it. And, um, and those that do don't make like you know, yeah. you know, uh, HMB spec armor. Yeah. So you have to build it. The what? Reenactment groups on the coast? Uh, I do. I, I go to SCA. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, cool. Who, who do you associate with? Um, well, we built our own one. I'll <laughs> oh, build your own one? But, um, no, uh, I've got a couple of good friends that have actually just started a new one. Um, oh, yeah? They're kind of near YE. But, um, the what? They're, they're near YE. YE? Oh, yeah, yeah. Kind of so that's like road. kind of further south, like maybe 30 minutes that way? Yeah. Um, well, north from you. <laughs> Everything's north from you. <laughs> um, okay, so what, what kind of stuff do you make? Um, I do costumes. So costumes. From favorite favorite era? Century to 14th. 8th century. Is that, um, is that dark or pre-dark? Um, very early Viking. Very early Viking. So, yeah. Dark Ages, all right. Not quite, um, Any particular nation nation you go for, or just all that is eighth? Yeah, so I do, um, they come to you with inspiration. I give them fabrics, and then they make their own patterns for them. Oh. Um, they can either choose for me to sew it, or I can cut it all out. I can get them with instructions, and they can sew it. Um, Natural dyes. Oh, cool. So, what are you building at the moment? Um, at the moment, I'm in the middle of restocking. Oh. So, I'm building some stuff for the Oh. But John's building a new table. Um, I've got a loom now, a big walkway loom now. Oh, wow. Um, and. So, looms, lo is lo looms are primarily for material, right? You probably. Yeah. Can could you still make, um, like, uh, lace with it, or is it just primarily? I guess in theory you could, but I don't know whether or not it'd be good. Probably worth it on that because it would take forever. However, like lace work, like because to be framing kind of weird because it, there's so much effort that goes into it. Ah, uh, see. Um, what do you? Well, uh, I was because I have to. I want 
I want a, a better alternative to shoelace, to lace-up armor. Oh. Yeah. Wait, okay, right. I, so, so that kind of lace. Right, so... So cords. I do, I do with cording. What? Um, do what? With, with cording, with bobbins. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know, like, how long does it take you to create... How much does it cost per meter? Um, with many materials, there's a bit of time to do Because, like, if you... If you do a good couple of meters relatively quickly. Because it... I... Oh, okay. Because... Because I'm... Because, uh... Because armor needs, because because the way Japanese armor is put together is that it's laced, mm. and I need like a fair decent amount of that. Okay, yeah. If you do a good price, then I'll probably sort. I'm looking for someone to source that because there's no one around here that does it. So I think, like, uh, if you look up Odoshi, say so O D O S H I, that's the stuff I'm looking for. It's used, um, it's used in armor lacing and, and also like sword binding. It's not a lot of it around here in Australia. Oh, so like flat cord? Yep. Mm. So odoshi. Mm. Yep. So even better is if you use uh, alternating colors mm. for, for it. So it becomes like more right. so hatched. Probably looking at no, um, I was going to say something along the lines of a narrow um, hard hmm? work. Something narrow. Yeah, narrow and flat. Tablet weaving, sorry. As well as what? Sorry? Tablet weaving? Ah. All right, I just got to look at chat. Sorry, Silent Devil, I've been ignoring you this entire time. Yeah, that. Yeah, um, there's a few people in Australia that make it. Um, yeah, but probably for not the prices I want. <laughs> Well, it's 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 handmade. That's yeah, I know, right? How could you? Uh, made with nothing but the finest ingredients. Oh, lol. <laughs> I am not interested in spiders. Like, what is was that? What did you find? What you're looking for? No, I'm gonna have to like buy another rod. So, oh, hard steel rod, if you know what I mean. Um, basically, like uh, I use the rod to wind raw wire around, so I can make the core. So I can make the. Uh, the coils. Oh, okay. So I'm going to need to buy another one of those because I lost one that was of a particular diameter. So yeah, I, I did not find what I was looking for, no. What are those floppy tubes? So uh, this is, so it's, it's basically a spring. So you can see like what this is here. It's, it's basically a spring um, made from brass. So what I do is, is I tie these Uh, so I tie these, I tie these together. So I, I, I wind this wire together to, to make that coil. And then from there, after it's wound, um, I can, I just cut into it like so and create rings. So we're going from raw wire to something like that. This is what we're doing right now. But yeah, I don't think anyone would do that for very cheap because it seems to be like handcrafted. So no brass, <laughs> no, none of that today. I wanted, I needed a brass like rod to, well, not a brass rod. I needed a steel rod to, that is exactly uh, six mils wide or five and a half. Um, to do it and 
that that rod is lost so I have to get another one I actually have a rod that's like six and a half mils but that's too large it's too noticeably large So yeah, so ultimately we're putting, we're making these, co we're wrapping the coils in masking tape, sawing through it manually because we don't have a machine to do it. It's too dangerous to use an angle grinder for this kind of stuff. And brass is pretty soft anyway, so that's what we're doing. So I used it in like half a jar of this, like on stream, just weaving it together. So I'm restocking on how many on the, uh, I'm restocking basically. Okay. It's kind of shit, but. So did you get inducted? Not yet. You need to chase him around. He, he kind of gets distracted. <laughs> I was worried that wouldn't turn out well because I kind of loaded it a bit short, but it turned out to be okay. Spinning gold, that's what this is. Just uses a little bit of um, uses a little bit of brass wire. I got a rod, but it ain't steel. Yeah, cause it's too soft. Too soft. Too soft for this kind of work. Okay. I thought we screwed up this cut, but thank God we didn't. Okay, it's fine. We lost a few rings because I cut it a bit too short. I'm going to restart Reddit. It's been here for like... Alright, look out for part two, guys. Remember for upvote and follow.
Ah, almost dropped it. All right, got to get Reddit up and running again. Reddit. Oh, no, 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 no. Start streaming. Uh, no wonder no one was watching. It was uh, distance socializing that we need to be in. Sweet, okay. Okay, I think I will do one more rod of this. That's fine. How you doing, Silent Devil? How's your week? How's Queensland? Yes, that's the good stuff. All right, I can put this back over here. What did Silent... Week's okay thus far? Uh, it rained today, finally. The weather up here is filthy. It's too damn hot. How are you going? Yep, we hit like 37 degrees the other day. It was not fun. And um, my aircon is like dying. Well, I thought it died. So I don't know like if it's actually broken or not, but... Um, so like I have like a I only rent so the, I don't have like good aircon and rentals never have good aircon. It's like they don't care about the people living there. They only care about the money. So there's no aircon there. Um, so I use a portable aircon system. Um, and like apparently. According to the remote control, like it can go down to 16 degrees. 
but when I set the when I set the temperature on the remote control to 16 degrees, like I think like the aircon started making really weird noises, and and like I could feel it losing power, like it slowly started outputting hot air instead of cold air. So it's really weird. So I don't know if like uh, I'm pushing my aircon too hard by setting it to 16 degrees because I thought that was sort of like a temperature that was that was available for me to like you know wander into. I thought that was like explorable territory, but no. It made the aircon like throw a hissy fit, basically. Um, so that aircon is like was outputting hot air. So I said, well, it's, that noise isn't good. So I turned it back. I dialed it back to 18 degrees. And bear in mind, like the size of the room and how hot the room gets, it's never going to reach 18 degrees. I just want it to output the maximum amount of, like pump out the maximum amount of heat it can out of the room. So that's why I set it so cold, because it's definitely a size aircon that is not meant for that size of room. Um, so when I, when I set it back, you know, two degrees to 18 degrees, it started working happily again. It's still not enough because the room itself will still be somewhat uncomfortable to stand in. Um, but if you're like always in front of the aircon, like getting the full blast of like the air, it's survivable. So... <laughs> That's how I, my week went. I discovered like a temperature that is be, that my aircon offered me, but was not able to keep its promise, and so I dialed it back. And when when it broke when it breaks its promise, it lies to me. So you know, and it starts it starts you know sweating. It starts making weird noises, and also like. And also, it it just straight up stops cooling. It starts heating. So I don't know what the story with that is. So going easy on the aircon um, seemed to work better. So yeah, that was my week. Just trying to figure out like why the hell is this machine lying to me? And you know, work is slow. Work is slow. So yeah, uh, my apartment has one aircon unit and it's bad. I know that feel, dude. So like my aircon is like about the size of a suitcase. It cost me $700. In fact, I still have the um, the invoice stuck to the side of it, so I don't think I'm going to get my money back. So I'm I, I went through the motions of oh man, if I have to replace this thing, that's basically five hundred dollars or like seven hundred dollars. <sighs> I went off expert advice, and clearly it was not good enough. So. Might have to replace it. You know what I was saving up my money for? I was saving up for a Roomba so I don't have to vacuum my floors. I don't even have a vacuum cleaner, I just sweep the floors. I was looking forward to a Roomba. But what do you think? Should I just... Uh... Do you think I should... I've always wanted a Roomba for a very long time, but I've always spent my money on other things. Like, if I think about it, I think an aircon is more important than a Roomba because I can still sweep the floors. Um, I can't do anything about the heat. So I think maybe aircon is more important than Roomba. But then again, Roomba, robotic, robotic um, vacuum cleaner. And I'll never have to sweep again. So like the more, 
the more you try, more lazy you try and be, the more engineering problems you have to solve. Because I think like, even if I get a Roomba, I have to spend like a couple more hundred dollars just to cable manage everything and tidy up all the floors and figure out how to like store things that are not on the floor. So the Roomba can like go everywhere and vacuum the place. Like apparently there's a, you need to prepare for the Roomba. So I don't know, what do you think? Do you think I should just go replace the aircon? I mean, the aircon's survivable, but only if I sit directly in front of it, like a fireplace. Or do you think I should get a Roomba and never, never clean the floors again? Do you think it's worth? What do you think? Expert advice. I know, right? I, I want to rely on expert advice, but it was really literally just a person like uh, at the store. And... Um, uh, I, should have, I should have taken a measuring tape, figured out how big my place was, and then figured out the amount of the power that I needed in an air, air conditioning unit. Cause like, I think, um, I think you need, you need to either go by kilowatts, which is basically how much energy the aircon uses, but energy doesn't mean how much you'll pump out. It just means how big your electricity bill will be. Um, whereas, um, the true unit to use would be BTUs or body temperature units. I think that's what it stands for. Um, so if you look up the specs, uh, you can see how much it pumps out. So what do you think, Devil? Do you think I should go for a Roomba or a, or an air conditioner? Because like, I think, if I use my head, I think air conditioner is more important because I won't be able to sleep if it's too hot. Whereas I can just clean the floors. I can do something about cleaning the floors. I can't do anything about heat and making my place livable. That's the way I'm thinking, but what are you thinking? Want a good AC? Close all your windows and doors and just leave your freezer door open. That's not how that works. <laughs> That's not how that works. Roombas are evil. AC is where it's at. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what I thought. And Dana Jones. What's up, Halo? How you doing? Welcome back. Wow, we got all the boys in. So, yeah, like, um, bear in mind, right? Like, bear in mind, uh, I get paid twice, twice a month. So... Literally, like, I think, I think it would take me two weeks to, I think it would take me two weeks to get this aircon without, without eating into savings. I think that's, I think my budget would allow for that. I think if I, my budget or finances, I think I can get an aircon in two weeks to save that, that amount of money. Um, but a Roomba is like a thousand dollars. So it would take me like, uh, actually, the way my financials are set up, I think it would take me like uh, three months to save for an aircon and it would take me like five months to save for a Roomba without eating into savings. I so, you know. Is that right? No, that's not right. No, I get $200 every two weeks to spend on whatever I want. So that's four. All right. It would take me two months. No, it would take me approximately a month, like just over a month to save for an aircon. It would take me um, two months to save for a Roomba. That's, that's how my financials are. So I calculated that wrong. 
So I'll take, yeah, a month, a month for the aircon, two months for the Roomba. So I don't know. Like I've already saved partway to the Roomba. So technically I could either buy the aircon now or wait a month for the Roomba. So that's the decision I have to make. Yeah, that's the decision I have to make. Oh, you think AC? Just want to be cool. <laughs> Roombas are evil. AC vacuum like a real man. See, I don't. E <laughs> and Dana Jones, I'm harder than that. I don't have a vacuum. I just sweep. I broom that shit. Which is why, like, I kind of want to go hard in getting a uh, vacuum. You know, I want to go hard in getting that vacuum. So no, I'm not gonna get a standard vacuum. Just gonna, just gonna go straight to robotics. Never worry about that stuff again. <laughs> you ain't a boy. I'm a man. How much to get paid? Uh, <laughs> move to watch you, Washington. I can get you a Gucci job. What kind of job? Are you just are you just gonna you know, whore me out on the corner? Are you just gonna be my pimp? Looking buff. What the? F <laughs> Brooman every day. <laughs> it's just a tight shirt, guys. That's that's the secret. It's just a tight shirt. It's it's uh it's how um it's how the Rock Dwayne Johnson looks so good. He just wears tight shirts. He just wears shirts that are a little small for him. That's how it works. Yeah. This is what we're doing. Just wearing tight shirts. It's a secret. Don't wear baggy shirts, wear tight shirts. Or compression shirts. This, this shirt is just a little too small for me. It still kind of fits, but it's a little too small. It's, that's the illusion. Everything looks bigger when everything else is smaller. So it's an optical illusion. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, if it comes like the aircon kind of works. See, see, this is where the lazy factor comes in. If I get the aircon, that means I have to get rid of the old aircon, and that seems like a bitch to move. It's like the size of a big suitcase. And I don't know how to dispose of it, so. I don't know how to dispose of it. So I have to like roll that out to my car, figure out where to dump it, and then get the new one, roll that one back in. And all that effort that I made to make the, um, to make, you know, the window, like the, uh, the panel, the custom panel that I made. So I don't know if you saw that, but uh, I used the makerspace to, I used the makerspace to make a, uh, uh, a window panel and it cut out a perfect circle so that I could fit it into my window. So that's the extra lazy bit. Like um, the window panel is removable, but all that work that I, that I <clears throat> put together and building in the first place will go to waste because I might need to replace and build a new one for for the new aircon. So just seems like BS to me. Just a lot of BS that I have to get through just to replace the aircon with a good one. And it's five hundred dollars on a problem I solved already. So you're right, I'm lazy. I just want things to work without with minimal effort. That's all I want. So yeah, but I think you guys are right. I think aircon is the way to go. 
And what did you, what did you mean by work there, uh, there in Dana Jones? I think I need like a visa and the visa would be too hard to get. Believe me, I want to, I want to try working in America and making it work there. Nice. I'd like to make it work, but getting a visa to America is like winning the lottery. Let's be honest. Going? Yeah. That's it? All right. See you. She wanted to sign. We can't sign up, really? We can't sign up, people? Is that not a thing? Anyway, it's not that hard to sign people up, is it? All right, well, okay. So we went through two coils, which is good. I'm gonna throw out these. So I made all of these coils and they were the wrong diameter. So I'm getting rid of them. Do you want brass coils? No, I'm throwing these out. Do you want oh. them for anything? No, good to you, Ali. Are they good as a spring? No, absolutely not. Like you can make you can make brass rings out of them and then make little bracelets with it, but this is with chainmail. Yeah, but they're too small for my design, so they're like too thin. I'd grab one just for the material. That's a perfect spring. You sure you don't want another one? It's it's not good yeah, as a spring. It's not good as a spring because it's, it's a, it doesn't it it doesn't it it, it, it it's poor it it, it, it doesn't at, remember. Yeah, it fails at its primary purpose. <laughs> yes. But if it's a static thing like chainmail and making bracelets and things, because yeah. it's often useful just to have different gauge wire and ends. I've got to, yeah, but that's a lot of throwing these away. Do you want one? Going in the bin. Springy stuff. No, it's not springy. At it's all. not springy at all. It's in a coil, so it looks it's like a coil. It's springy, but it's brass. It's brass wire, 1.6 millimeter gauge. That'd be actually useful for little main badges or something. Sure. Yeah, I'll take a a I'll take a lot of you know. Sure, I don't want them. It's yours. <laughs> Your problem now. <laughs> Use it to conduct electricity. I don't care. <laughs> it's a metal. Yeah. yeah. It's also non corrosive, it won't rust. It's just super soft, so don't put it through stress. Make a wig, anything. I don't. I don't want it. <laughs> Oof! All right, that was easy. Got rid of all that wire for free. <clears throat> it was a mistake. All of it was a mistake. But we got our stash of links again. So got our good stash, so we can like weave this throughout the week. Or if you like, I can show you how to turn those into rings and then you can make chains. <laughs> All right. Second thing, I'm going to fix up this. This is, I need to sharpen it to this point. So this doesn't, it's not exactly a fitting wakizashi yet. So I'm going to sharpen that up. <clears throat> so that's the second project tonight. 
I'm just getting, I'm just knocking out some mini projects today. So we want to make. So we want to make we want to make like a katana that has this kind of point um, as a model, but we kind of like try to make it too safe, and now it's just got like a blunt end. So we're gonna like try and sharpen that up. Should be pretty easy. Like it's just wood. So I'll do that. <clears throat> okay. Well, the end can't be safe, so we have to saw it off. Because it curves it curves inwards. So we're gonna have to saw that off and start again. Painful, doesn't it? I think I want to loosen this and like slightly tilt it outwards. I'm uh, using a cloth to cover the vise because I don't want it to because I don't want it to um, ruin the finish on the wood because it's pretty smooth. Don't want to put a whole bunch of bite marks into it. Okay. Just gonna do this the hard way, which is basically just gr just rasp it into the shape we want. Okay, so we got our model. Don't put this away. <sighs> hey, what's up? Why the phone on the wrist? Uh, so I can so I can see chat, obviously. Um, can't sign up people, what do you mean? Oh, like, oh, you know we're in like a makerspace, right? Which is just a making club, a project club, where everyone could just like build whatever they want. I was like saying to the other members, like one of the, one of the new faces left because, um, now I don't know the exactly what happened, but one of the new faces is like, we can't, we can't get done what we need to today, which I assume is sign-ups because she's new. So, I assume it's like trouble signing up new people. Uh, as for the people on Reddit, um, what's going on here? Uh, we're knocking out a couple of small projects today. I've, um, so earlier I was making rings for Chainmail. This is, um, we're just, uh, trying to carve or trying to like re this is a broken this is a broken bokken so a bokken is a training sword um that we use for for like martial arts so this is my broken one um but like even if you break um even if you break your full length katana even if you break it you can you can shave it down into like a wakazashi so so pro tip, if you break your katana, 
and you still have most of the blade, you can shave it down into wakizashi, which is a short sword. And um, the wakizashi is is like a is like a sidearm to the sidearm, so it's kind of weird, but um, but mostly it was used for indoors. So whenever you would um, enter like a, a house, um, the guards would ask you to leave your full length katana. Like, like an umbrella at the door. You weren't allowed inside if you had a full length katana. But to defend yourself, uh, to defend yourself, you are allowed a wakizashi. So they would allow you to carry these indoors, um, but they would not allow you to carry your full length katana. Which is why, uh, which is why you have a daisho which would, so this, this is the shō part of the daisho. Daisho means um, big, small. It, it also refers to the pair of weapons that samurai generally carry around. So that pair, um, the long one, obviously the katana is used for outside. You're allowed to carry it outside. Um, but the, the small one was usually for indoors, for indoor protection. Um, just in case, you know, you offend the master of the house too much, he orders you to die, his, uh, his followers turn on you, you at least have this allowed. So, and that happened a lot back in the day. Some people just set up dinners as traps. Um, so what we're doing here is, is that we're, we're actually doing what would have happened if you actually snapped a katana uh, back then. Katanas were extremely hard to make. So you would reuse broken katanas as, as short swords. So all you had to do there is if you had it break, it would break there and then you would shave it down and resharpen it and it would become your short sword. I find it kind of weird because um, it's not technically a sidearm because you never use it in battle unless you were like extreme close range. So you would never use it in battle as much. Um, but so, and also like the, the katana isn't, isn't a primary weapon. So, so the katana is like basically a pistol to your rifle. It is a sidearm just in case your main weapon fails. So the katana is not a main weapon. And what I find amusing is, is that the, <laughs> The, uh, the wakizashi is like the sidearm of the sidearm. So usually your primary weapon would be a spear or a bow. And then, and then in close quarters, you'd have like your um, wakizashi. So what I find amusing is that this wakizashi, a wakizashi is a sidearm of the sidearm, which I find pretty funny. So yeah, we're, so this, 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 uh, this is like one of the first Bokken that I was given um, and it snapped because it's made of wood. Um, so we're doing what we would have done back in the day. We're trying to repurpose it basically. So this is, we're, we're repurposing a broken katana into a wakizashi and that's what we're doing. So that's the short answer anyway. Not sure that was obvious. You're gonna have to ask four questions because uh, the stream has a delay. So this is a. Um... So yeah, uh, we're so we're reshaping. We're reshaping this, or at least we're trying to. So my teacher gave me uh, one of his wakizashis to to model it off. So we want this kind of curve. I think I need to go a bit steeper. I'm just gonna pull that material through so there's not a lot of overhang. So yeah, uh, so that's what we're doing. Oh, I just got to get the side profile. It's not deep enough. So we're just going to shave off the shoulder a bit more. So we're just rasping it. 
is just the file. We're going with the grain of the wood. So that curve is starting a lot, a lot better. And sharpening up the edges. good okay, and then we're just got to do the other side how you doing reddit how's how's things how's your week how's corona that's managing. Uh, if this is your first time on the channel, this is uh, Senpai TV. This is my channel. Um, we do a lot of DIY maker stuff here. So I'm, I'm, today like is, is, is a kind of different day because we're not working on our main projects that we have in play at the moment. So I can show you the main projects. So there's nothing stopping me from doing that. Um, but we usually end up making armor. So that's something I get up to. So we, so at the moment, like uh, one of our projects is making armor, which I have on the ground there. Um, we're trying to restore some. I'm very big on Japanese uh, medieval stuff. That's cool. Kind of getting there. Curve is kind of weird, but. It's kind of off center this curve. Okay. Just gonna smooth this out. But um I think that's a pretty good tip. Except I need to shave off that corner there, which is really quite strange. good enough it's not really balanced but this is a it's a much better tip than we what we had previously i think it pretty much matches this pretty much i do need to get rid of that edge on the top just for safety not to make it so pointy. Mm. 
No, it's good enough. So yeah, so I knocked that one out pretty easily. It's quite a simple, just a simple edge. This side looks way better. It actually looks like it's got a blade, whereas this side is kind of just lazy. I haven't really evenly shaved that off, so I think I might have a go of that. Yeah, okay. We'll try and even up the, uh, the blade on the side. It's just a wooden blade, but still, you've got to like, get the aesthetics right. I think that looks a little better. That's all right, I think. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna leave that as is. So we're knocking that out. Now onto the main event. Uh, uh, we're going to line the armor that we were storing previously. I need to spray paint one of them. Let's see, let's craft some Mandalorian armor, please. Uh, all right, let me, just, let me just show you what I was preparing earlier. Um, I actually have something to show you if you're interested, but let me just clean up first. So we got, we got our two Wakazashis. This one's, um, we got our two Wakazashis. So this one's this one's the one. It's it's just for trading, obviously, but looks pretty good to me. Hopefully, my teacher will not look at me in uh, in such disgust and dishonor in his school. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? I know, no silent devil, big oof. I don't know what that is. But uh, I don't know, hopefully she'll be back next week. So we'll see. Um, what, you love watching stuff like this? Well, maybe this is the channel for you. So I encourage you all to upvote and follow. Would really help me out. Um, I stream uh, Tuesdays and Fridays and some extra sessions in between if I'm feeling up to it, but I make a commitment for Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, all right. So I'm gonna like get one thing going first. So I'll just bring you over to show you what I'm on about. So uh, so this is the chest armor that we were making before. Um, so this is the chest armor we were making before. Uh, we scraped off all the crappy paint and now we're about to repaint it. So this is all, as you can see, you can see all the scratches. Um, we're gonna repaint it now. So we're finally at that state of being able to repaint it. So I need to give it a quick brush and then I'll be able to spray paint it. So this was in like huge disrepair before. And now we're finally at the state where we can paint it and it looks a lot better when it does. Also, we got all most of the kinks out. All right, so let's set this up. Open the window. Open the damn window. All right. So the paint tape, just put a sheet down. We should actually lift it off the sheet with a with like a box or something. It should do. Because uh you don't want it. I learned the hard way that if you have it touching the floor, the paint tends to stick it to the floor. So, 
Oh, that looks all right. Or actually, we'll probably go more like this. So, wanna, all right, cool. Let's give it a quick brush. Spent like an entire night scraping it off. So, see you, Dominic. All right, Lord Vader will be pleased with our Stormtrooper armor. I <laughs> don't think he has any Beskar on hand. Well, uh, don't you worry guys, I will be restarting the stream. We don't have a lot of time left, but uh, we will restart the stream. So uh, upvote and follow, I'll make, be making a part three. Um, I'll be resetting stream, so stay tuned. Starts break from this edge. That's that. Got that done. I think what are we almost out of time? I don't know, I can't tell. Do we have like one minute thirty or more? Well, thanks for the rocket like uh, eye glocks. Um, so we're gonna just leave that there to to dry and then we're gonna focus on lining everything else. So. Finally getting rid of the graveyard. No, I get it. Kind of test. One of these. test? Yep. When did we ever start testing? Ugh. This finish looks really bad. I think this needs a second paint. I'm going to need a second paint for this. Uh, get some salt. Paint job looks really bad here, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to be coating it with glue anyway, so shouldn't be that much of an issue. All right, let's restart. Okay, let's restart Reddit.
And we're back. Cool, we're back. That's kind of shit. What do you use your servers for? Uh, self hosted cloud drive. <laughs> um, where the server uh, builds. Yeah, okay. Sounds neat. Okay. All right, you can finally get to lining it. Okay, got a new hot glue gun, and it's stuck in. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Yeah, we're back. So, uh, uh, sorry, moving the camera. We're back. We're back. All right, glad you could find it. How, how hard was it to find? How hard was it to find? Like, um, I don't use, are you on the mobile app or are you on the browser? Okay, so, so here's the Mandalorian armor I prepared earlier. So this is the back plate. Duratanium steel, naturally. Okay, so we're looking to line this stuff. So this is, so we got, we got some wool and we're going to basically just stick the armor with the wool. But I'm wondering if I should, uh, maybe I sh can't lace it. I have to put the, maybe I can't, la I can't line it just yet. I need to lace all the plates back in. I think maybe, uh, this could just cut holes afterwards. 
I think lining has to come last. I have to put the plates back on. So maybe we can't line it today. Maybe I've been, maybe I've been lying to this stream this entire time. Uh, we can't lace it. I mean, we can't line it because I have to lace the plates back on. So there are some plates. Well, you get to see some other interesting stuff, basically. Lacing has to come another day, but... Okay. Um, all right, we're just, we're just doing a different step. We can't line up with wool just yet. We have to put the plates back on. <sighs> Gotta figure out which plates are which. Ugh, it's all falling apart. Okay, so we'll have a whole bunch of plates. That's arm, that's shoulders, everything else should be plates. That's neck. That's nose. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so I have a whole bunch of plates. Just gotta figure out what set of plates go with this back plate. And also we need the replacement lace that is going on, which is the new golden stuff, which hopefully we have enough of. Otherwise we have to order like a fuck ton more, which will, definitely be bad okay all right we're doing something completely different but that's okay still needs to be done <sighs> okay oh, all right so <sighs> just gotta sort like the a pile of armor plates that i have i don't know how many there are that's four. Is it just four? Is it a set of four? Looks like five, maybe. Maybe it's five. Might be five. That's another set. Yeah, it's, that's, that's five. I think we're dealing with a set of five. I think this goes with this one. That's missing that. It's another set of five. That's another set of five. That's another set of five. So I think we're dealing with like three on the front, three on the back. I think that's the setup we have because we have six sets of armor plates. All right, that's easy. All right, so six on the front. So we got three on the front. So we got this, this, and this. Okay. All right. So we got to fit all of this onto that. Oh, okay. I don't think we have a whiteboard marker around here. Do we have a pencil? Do we have a pencil? Because I don't want to permanently mark this thing. Yes, we do have a pencil. Okay. All right, so we got to disassemble these and use the new lace to get where we need to go. <clears throat> All right, how is this lace together? One of it's done really cheap. Okay, so that goes down like that, like that, like that, like that. And then a small knot at the end. It really looks like a loop. Where does it begin and end? Maybe it's maybe it's trickery at the bottom here. Nope, that's that's a cross lace. And that goes all the way up to the top. Okay. 
That goes down like that. That's fine. Okay. I think it all, like all these uh, keels uh, originate somewhere in the top. So, okay. All right. All right. Well, then in that case, we will uh, unstitch the ones that hold all the plates together first, and then we'll do the others. So, and awesome. They glued it together as well. So, thank you. Chinese manufacturer. Thanks for filling my armor with glue. Really appreciate it. That wasn't too hard, just had to surf a bit. Okay. Did you met what did the following help or no? Did you just like find your way back here? Um like by brute force, or did you use the follow method and and that helped you guide to the profile? Or did you actually search the title again? I'm just wondering how you got back here. Oh wow, that's not how that works. Okay. That's really weird. That's not how that's supposed to go. Huh. Okay, how did they do this? I'm really confused right now. Like, how did they lace this together? So the top, it's a diagonal thing. What? That is super weird how they did that. I'm trying to figure out how they did this knot. So they just went. So they went diagonally across bottom. And then that's. Okay, so they went top, bottom, across, bottom, top. So it's like a U shape. Basically. Yeah, so it's like a U-shape. Okay, so that's how they did it. All right, well, I have plenty of examples. I don't need to, like, keep this one intact. Um, but perhaps it will be easier if I focused on the, the, the laces doing the work holding up the armor. I'll do those first. So... All right, let's do this the normal way, the way I know. What is this? Uh, we are lacing samurai armor, so probably don't have a good angle there. Oh, let me just see if I can get here. All right, so we're, we're building, we're, we're lacing samurai armor. Um, but this is like old shitty lace that I cut off, so I want to replace this with the good stuff. So we're currently just pulling it all out, and then we're going to put it, put the new stuff in there. So that's what this is all about. So you're going to have a session of how to how to like tie together um, samurai armor. So this is how samurai armor was constructed. It was usually laced together, usually. But there were sh some shortcuts with this particular build, so I'm trying to work around those. I'm trying to get rid. All right, so I'm just going to move these out of the way. We don't need these. And um, I need to mark these down. So, so one, two, Three, four, five. So I'm just trying to like pull all this out because um, it sucks. And we're putting some new lace on. So. so that's what this is. We are building, we are literally building samurai armor. Um, so, so this. How this fits together on the on the um, back plate. So this is the back plate. 
just gonna show you how. So this is the back plate. Um, how the armor hangs down is like down here. So it, it hangs off this bottom edge and it protects, it protects the joint between, um, it protects like your joints between, like between your torso and your legs. So it's like the hanging plates. Um, in English, this is called tassets. So this, these are the tasset plates. Um, but what we're working on here is uh, kusa zuri, which is the Japanese uh, way of, um, which is the Japanese word for tassets. So working on Japanese tassets or kusa zuri. Uh, armor for what? Samurai armor. Yeah. So the, the stormtrooper armor that we have going. Um, so we're taking a shortcut in the sense that um, all these plates were already white. So that's why we just repainted it white so we don't have to change the color. So we're just trying to like undo all the shitty work that has happened here. Yeah, I'm gonna do it right. Um, so nowadays you get these um, as shoelace, so you can easily get shoelace nowadays. Which, ba it's, which is practically lace, it's just flat lace. Um, usually, like back in, like how they were, they were originally made with like silk lace, so, but this is like nylon. Supposedly stronger, but originally they were silk. All right. Right. Get that. Get rid of that. Get rid of the crappy lace. We'll tackle the top braid eventually. We're, we're ta um, but right now we're going for the um, going for the load bearing load bearing lace. Just trying to undo all of that. Pick it off. There is some glue, which is gross. You're not supposed to glue it. At least not at the top. You're supposed to glue it at the bottom. And I'll show you the proper way to lace these plates together. But um, if you know how to do this technique, you'll know how to build like the rest of the armor. Because the rest of the armor is very similar to this. It's just a different size plate with more keels. So. This technique is the is the core of the entire armor because Japanese armor uses just this to build their to build everything. They laced everything together. So what I'm saying is, is if you master like how this is done, um, you'll be able to build literally everything else. So if you're starting making this armor. Um, I would suggest like starting here on like a small, small plate, so you don't have to commit to like your larger armor first. You can go for like a, like a shoulder plate first. So like a shoulder plate is called a sode. Oh wow, they actually glued the ends of the lace together. Wow. Okay. You're not supposed to glue it together like that. I think they were trying to hide the fact that they were gluing it. Um, but yeah, uh, as I was saying, um, you could start off with something like really simple. So the shoulder plate is the most simplest thing. It's basically this this hanging plate, like these are kusa zuri, um, is basically what a shoulder plate looks like. So it's a very roller shutter, like lobster tail type armor. It's just like bands of steel. Um, so you could start off if, if you ever wondered, you know, like how to make them, or if you have the time or patience to make them. Generally, you'll be doing this technique a lot, which is like lacing the armor together. So 
Um, all right, so we now have our plates. We'll leave the top bit for later, so the top bit can just stay. Um, but, but in making these, you want like a little bit of overlap. So you will like want like one inch of overlap, generally. Where did my pencil go? So I'm gonna get my calipers. So to make sure that we're doing this right. I swear I had my calipers around here somewhere. Um, it was in a, oh, there it is. Sweet, okay, got the calipers. Okay, so I was just wanting to measure out half an inch with this thing. Like how far do we want it to hang off the edge? Like how much overlap do we want? So I'd say about like 14 mils, seems right. Okay, so I'll make it 14 mils. Just mark that out. So uh, this is a pretty important part because um, the uh, the beauty that comes from comes from this armor making is making everything hang the same. So it's like a repeatable pattern, and that it's easy on the eyes. If you hang a plate too low, it's going to be so obvious that you didn't pay enough attention to your plate and how it hung. So make sure you measure, literally measure twice, cut once. Gotta make sure it all hangs out the same. And then not just this set of plates either, you got to make sure it hangs the same on the other sets. It's bleedingly obvious if you didn't do it right because it just sticks out. I think I need to repair like one of these armors because it's showing signs of rust. So this it's got it's this this one in particular has a rusty edge. It's got a bit of rust on there, so I want to like sand that off and then perhaps tackle this another day. Sand off the rust and then repaint it. Think of using the sewing machine? Do you have a sewing machine at home? Yeah, I have a, um, a singer. It's really old. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, Basically looks like that, right? Yeah, but it's, like, yeah. it's probably a little bit older than that, too. Oh, but making a funny noise, so I was like, oh, yeah. need to get it looking better. Well, the, um, the plastic, that plastic one works. So, yeah. But I imagine you don't have anything to work on at the moment. Pardon me? I imagine you don't have anything to work on at the moment. Like here right now? No. Yeah. I make like scratchies and stuff. Scratchies? Scratchies? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really easy. Like a bit of material. Like a little, um. What's it called? Sorry. I'm very tired. Nylon. Yeah, just like a little, like, kind of thing. You just sew it kind of inside out. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, cool. This is really cool what you're doing. I mean, I was watching over there. Oh, really? Oh. Are you live now? Yeah, we're live, but uh, it, it doesn't matter. This isn't like a scripted show. Oh, okay. There's no canned laughter. Just just jump in. Yeah, cool. And there's like, um, if you can't be bothered making it, you can tune in online. Yeah, cool. See what I'm doing. Um, but we're, we're restoring some armor. Oh, man. This must be urgent. I'll be right back. Uh, yes. Hello? What? Uh, yeah, I see you. What is it?
Give me a sec. Uh, can't hear you yet. Say something. What? Say again. Yeah, yeah. My phone number. My what? Uh, uh, yeah. I changed my number away. Uh, I, I switched to Optus, so it still works, but it's our Optus now. So, stay, same number, yeah, same number, but with Optus.
Tech support for parents, it's the worst. Oh, God damn it. All right, we're back. I hope. Where was I? Oh, there's six minutes to go. Great. Ugh. Is anyone still on stream? Is everyone still here? Everyone's gone. Stream ruined. No, it's okay. Yeah, but after like pulling this apart, you can I can see like it is it is mimicking traditional armor, but none of the construction methods are traditional. For a start, there's spot welds. Do you know what a spot weld is? All right. So what you do is that you drill a hole through one plate and you sandwich that over the other. So instead of a rivet, you have like a hole in one plate and the other plate doesn't have a hole. And then you weld where that spot is, so it fuses that hole to the rest, yeah, together. And that's a spot weld, because it makes a spot. It's yeah. a spot where you weld. Yeah. So they have several of these spot welds, which obviously couldn't be done back yeah. then. So that's one thing. So, <laughs> second thing is, is that the cords are made of nylon, which we can't really do much about, but the cords are made of nylon is like, it's okay, I guess, but it, they didn't have that back then. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, they, they glue it like instead of, well, they didn't use lacquer to to tie off the, the ends of the lace. So they just, they just literally super glued the ends. Yeah. So obviously super glued. Um, but other than that, it's all right. Um, so yeah, like we're restoring this stuff. So like they, if you look really closely, there's like a whole bunch of dents um, that I filled in with like putty. So there's there's like there's like arrow holes here, and then like there's this one that you can barely see. So we we there's, there's a whole bunch of dents that we fixed. So we filled it in with so basically like this is smash repair. So so we got like um car car putty like body filler patched in patched in the holes, sanded it down, spray painted over the top basically that and then it was also rusting as well so that's why you can see like yeah but better than it was before so um do you want to know i have i have like three sets of this stuff so if you want to learn how to do it you can sit here and, try, and i'll give you a set to do if you like if you're looking for something to do oh you're going so i have this set yeah, yeah. So this is like the the this these are tassets. Yeah. Or hang down. Yeah, that hang down. Cool. It protects the joints between your torso and legs. Yeah, cool. So if, are if you doing it, like a whole piece or just like the top part of it? Like all another part of. Um, Everything in that bag, like that's a whole suit. Oh, yeah. So we just spray painted that over there. Yeah. Um, the helmet is in that bag. Yeah, we're restoring the whole thing, so and we're making it better. Do you have like a few other videos that you've done on your yeah. channel? Yeah. Channel for? Um, do you what have you, a smartphone? Yeah. What is what are you doing right now? It YouTube. Oh, it's on Twitch, YouTube, and Reddit. Okay, I'll just write it in my phone because I don't know it. We're very good at that. Oh, yeah. What's it called? Yeah, Reddit. I know. Uh, you can even tune in live. Or, uh, I'm here on Tuesdays and Fridays. Oh, cool. Uh, TV. So, what are you interested in making in the space? Um, I don't really know. Like, I just I do a little like like craft stuff. Craft. Um, my best friend has been making like 
Vinyl stickers. Vinyl stickers. Um, I'd like to make like a vinyl t-shirt sticker or something, something that can go on a shirt. Oh. Um. I don't think we have any printers. The best we could do. Oh, like a, a vinyl cutoff, but I don't know. Isn't isn't vinyl just, you know, like well, how thick is the vinyl? Isn't it just like paper? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Basically. Basically. So you could just get a standing loaf and. Yeah, you and then and then like iron know. it on. Yeah. Is that how you do it? Iron it on. I think so. Um, but my friend made like vinyl car stickers too, so like something like that. But I'm not I'm not sure. There's a lot of things that I'm new. But oh. I, I like um, I can make candles and stuff. That's great. Um, Interesting. So so like um, I actually have a wax kit over here. Oh, cool. So that so that that yellow jar on that shelf there, a whole bunch of wax. Yeah. Um, and we just use the bar. I just use the barbecue to melt all that. Okay. So, like candles? not candles, but um, uh, I use the wax as a sealant. So what I do is yeah. that I make. If you watch on the YouTube and and stuff, um, same thing for it's on it. There's there's clips on and pictures on Instagram as well. But oh, yeah. I can show you quick. But uh, let's see. Where's me? See, like, so I use the wax to seal the inside of that. What is that? That's a that's a flask made of bamboo. Oh wow, that's clever. Yeah, it's super easy to make. So it's a survival it's a survival bamboo. Um, it's a survival canteen. Okay. So you can easily make um, you can e easily make a canteen out of just a section of bamboo. Yeah. Okay. And to make it last, you seal the inside with wax. Okay. So what? It, so what? Um, Makes it. Like a drink, like, like yeah, yeah, just a drink bottle. Yeah. Okay. So don't put anything hot in it. Obviously, it'll melt the wax. But yeah. you can use it like a bottle. Do you put it in like in the bottom, like to seal it off? Or is that what you mean? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So you just slosh it on the inside, oh, okay. and that's what I use that wax kit for. Um, you can make you. It, it's really easy to make candles. Um, yeah. Like the lumpy ones. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to make the lumpy ones with that wax. Yeah. You just get string and just dip it over and over again. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I want to kind of experiment with my candle making, but like I've just been making little jars and. Oh, jars, and you put the wick in, and then it burns through the jar. Yeah, I've just been making like basic ones, but like just for like my little. I'm just making like a little pop-up page, so I've made like. Oh yeah. Scrunchies, candles, melts. Um, I'm gonna make like little bags and stuff too. That's what little I'm bags talking about over there. But they're like kind of like kind of like them, but a bit different. And I want to make like denim bags as well. Ah, uh, denim bags. Oh, yeah, and like kind of like repurposed like clothes, <laughs> kind of jeans bags. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like recycle, I guess. So if you have like a pair of jeans, and then you can repurpose it for something else. I, yeah, that that is cool. I'm just gonna oh, restart okay. streaming. I'm, those, yeah, but, um, I'm a hairdresser, so I'm, I get quite busy around this time of year. So why this time of the year? Just everyone get like wants to like because they have Christmas parties and. Like, oh yeah, they want to look good. Yeah, and like the New Year, but like because of COVID, like we got like um like we shut down for like five weeks, but. Um, I think I'm gonna need a spool for this. But yeah, you get quite. Okay, but, so this is just good time for us, like for a lot of hairdressers. I guess this will do. So what are you, what are you doing with that? Just winding it. Yeah, yeah, that's all I'm doing. Uh, so like, uh, I make mo I'm, I mostly innovate most of the armor making that happens around here. Yeah, cool. Um, so this is just, this is what I usually use to make. Uh, the rings. So, if you want, like, uh, in that jar over there, I made a whole bunch of rings. Um, yeah. So we go from we go from this raw wire that you just buy, turn it into that, and then cut it and get a whole bunch of rings, and you can make chain mail from it. Yeah. Well, psh, internet. It's amazing what you do on you can find on the internet. But, um, are you from, like, are you born in Australia? Or you yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is your family, like, where are they from? Oh, uh, they're from Burma. Oh. But uh, I'm just, I'm, I want to get more into the, 
medieval side of things. Yeah, cool. Um, Do you like um, like Viking kind of style or more Japanese? More... Yeah, okay. Because like, there's not there's too many Vikings and knights around here. Yeah, so it's more like um, the Japanese armor and all that. Yeah, because I'm because I'm a fan of like Japanese stuff. Yeah, cool. Not so much um. Oh God. Uh, what have I done? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, everything Japanese. So, like, uh, I'm just gonna adjust that camera angle. It's all good. You could be in the chart. I don't, I don't mind. Um, so, yeah, ja Japanese stuff, basically. So, uh, I've been lear I've been learning how they fight. Like, they the picked up the martial arts to use a sword. Yeah. Yeah. Um, building the armor. Yeah. Like, uh, I th like, I just made it a goal, basically, because, like, uh, I went to went to those uh, medieval festivals that happened throughout the year. Like in Sydney? Hmm? Like, they haven't been Sydney or something? Yeah, yeah. So, have you been to those? No, but we were going to go with a couple of our friends. We never ended up going, but oh. um, it sounds cool. Yeah, I mean... Okay. Um, so, uh... There's, like, jousting and stuff there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you got Blacktown, you got Iron Fest, you got Winterfest. Yeah. Whole bunch of other fests. Yeah. Do you dress uh, up and stuff? Yeah. Well, I'm hoping to. This is what this is for. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't have the gear because it's really hard to. Um, man, this is way better. Because uh, I don't have the gear because it's because nobody nobody sells it, nobody makes it in Australia. Yeah. Um, and if you want it imported in Japan, then that's like buying a car. So. It's so more, so much more expensive, and the fact that if you want to participate, because I want to participate in those, uh, yeah. in those festivals. Uh, you can, you can like. You, they can, they you you can like uh like buy armor from Japan, but it's almost like buying a portrait, like oil paintings and like. Because it's like now a traditional art, right? Yeah. Um, but it's either way super expensive to to buy it. But Australia Australia is blessed to have um really cheap steel. Yeah. So steel is really abundant here, so it just makes sense to make it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you can make it, then why not? Yeah, but it just takes a goddamn a lot of time. Yeah. A lot of time. Well, it seems like you're passionate about it, so that keeps it going. Right? Yeah. Well, I'm also trying to build a YouTube channel, like just uh. Yeah, YouTube cool. channel as well, yeah. so yeah. it's like a video log type thing. Hmm. So um, you have a few followers and stuff. <laughs> not as much as I would I would like, but you know, yeah, gotta start somewhere. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You start small, get bigger. Pretty right. much. So what what about you? Like, uh, are you are you planning again to the t-shirt making business, or you're just like you know uh, making stuff for your blog? Just a hobby, really. Just a hobby. Yeah. Like, because I'm um, at the moment, Christmas time is the busiest time for my work too, so like it will kind of, oh, yeah. Yeah, kind like, of die down. But I want to do a market. A market? Yeah, my friend's been making like um, uh, I'm wanting to get those like um, ceramic teapots, like um, pots, like, like clay pots. Just like the, like the, uh, uh, sorry, um, What, just pottery making or? No, she just like, she got some pots from Bunnings, they're just like the normal. Kind of, oh, like terracotta. Yeah, that's it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and she paints them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just just crafts. Yeah. It's like small crafts. Yeah, and it's like it's so like so easy and. Like, but but what do you want to do? What well, all my other stuff. So I probably I've got like tie dye. I've got my scrunchies, my candles. Oh man, be more ambitious than that. Like yeah. like here you could like. Out of all the things, mm -hmm. you've got so much tools, I know, and also you got laser cuts as I well. Know. So there's like so much stuff. Joe's like, oh, you could do this, or you could do that. It's like oh, it's so much stuff. Yeah, well, one one step at a time. Yeah, well, I've only just like really started it out, so it's going slow. But I would probably incorporate more things and take it to the market. Okay. Do do they actually sell? Like I've never. I know my parents. My parents did the uh, whole flea market type thing, but um, is it is it good money or is it sort of just like eh? Whatever. I haven't actually done one yet. But, really? Um, I think it will because 
a lot of like women and stuff love candles. Oh yeah. Always buy candles at a market. Really? Yeah. Like it's interesting. Like it's but then like I I like tie dye is really in at the moment too. So a lot of people like that kind of stuff too. Tie tie dye. Tie dye. Yeah, like dyeing. Oh, that. Mm. Yeah. So like it's very in at the moment. So like. Oh really? Huh. Yeah. Okay. In Australia. But... It's like. Uh... Where are you based? Are you based in Central Coast or like Sydney or Central Coast? Yeah. Central Coast, right? So what what be what what wax are you gonna use for your candles? Soy. Soy? Yeah. Soy, not bees. No. No. Just just preference. I've just, I've used it before because I've been I actually did a lot of candle making a few years ago, but mm -hmm. um I just like the way it burns. It's quite it's nice. Okay. And it's like natural, so it's not. Oh, bad. <laughs> bad. Not bad. But what about bees? Oh yeah, no too. I have beeswax as well, but I don't use it. I only use it for I make like um natural lip balms with it. Oh, okay. Because so like, like you can like use beeswax and um, shea butter and. Because like I have my teacher who teaches the. Uh... Oh, I cook coconut oil. What for candles? No, for um, oh, lip balm, right? Yeah, yeah bro. it's all like natural stuff. Ah, I see. Because, like, because, like, um, my teacher that teaches me like how to use katanas and stuff, he he has like uh, he has bee, he he also does beekeeping. So, if you wanted a source of, of like wax, wax yeah. yeah, could hook you up I there. I use like bee wax for, for candles. Is it harder to like, are they harder to burn? Like, no, I don't think so. I wonder, I wonder, I'll look into it. Try it. Yeah. I mean, like, most waxes are pretty, pretty easy going. Yeah. I think, I think I like soy so much just because it's easy to like. Yeah like use like some of the can the candle works you have to like um research a lot more of like how to like what, what temperatures it helps from when to pour it and all this stuff but it's always been the easiest one to kind of deal with but yeah it'd be interesting to try being. oh wow someone's in the chat right now uh oh armor cool goodbye well well that's i did forgot to update the uh the thing i'm looking at so where is that should i put in part four somewhere how did you get all your little setup? Yeah, just bought it piece by piece. Um, originally, you can do get this done with a mobile, um, which I started off with. But then, if you want to like make YouTube videos, you kind of need like better stuff, better stuff. So what's the thing on your wrist? Is that mobile? Yeah, it is. So it's just uh. So it's connected. I'm just using it so I can see the chat box. Uh, where are you? Workshop. Yes, we are in the workshop. Have you? I don't recognize your name. Oh, Zamafe. You were in the last hour. We we're here for the last hour. Glad you find the space again. But um, we're just winding the lace so we can use it effectively. So now that it's on a spool and all organized, we finally do what we set out to do. You know, there's a chair. You can sit down. I don't want to be in the video. <laughs> you want to be? <laughs> well, just take the chair over there. <laughs> Not a chair. Okay. So, uh, yeah, here we are. Right. So, yeah, just bought it piece by piece. It's not easy, but you can actually just do all of that with a mobile. But then you're restricted in what. Oh, oh, oh. It does that because if you don't tighten it and it's also very top heavy. Yeah, I was just like, oh, is that supposed to be doing that? <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. So we'll handle this later. That's its own thing. So we don't need to worry about that. Um, but we do want to have a long enough strand of lace. So the Japanese word for this is odoshi. Um, it can be made with many colors, not just one. But I went with the white gold color scheme, the angelic color scheme. Because I think gold looks all right with white. I mean, if you use white and black, it's just Stormtrooper. So, okay, this should be long enough. That's one. So we need four. So we got four keels to do. 
So we need like four lengths of that. Four lengths. Yep. So four of these. And they go in like one. Oh yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. So. And let's hope that we got this measurement right the first time. And hopefully we don't need too much more. Because like if we. Okay. All right. We got one spare, so we'll, we can test out how the first one goes. Ah, uh, just sharpen this edge a bit. Hopefully, it doesn't fray too badly. What do you use to spray the edges? Did you say you use wax? Oh, to uh to seal up the edges. I just burn. Burn it. Yeah, cause like. This is nylon, so it's plastic. So yeah, okay. So just like um, you just burn it and melt it and smush it. Yeah. But perhaps that's not a good idea right now because that's not working. It's already fraying. Uh, just tape it down. Otherwise, it's going to get annoying. Roll, roll, roll the dope, twist it at the end. <laughs> Have a puff and then your stuff, pass it to a friend. <laughs> Alright, here we go. I think that's good. And we just got to sharpen up the other edge. And then, or can we just roll it in? Do we even have to do this bit? Because this bit doesn't even do the full job. Can we just wrap it in? You need sharp scissors. <laughs> yes. See those red ones over there? Yeah. Could you get them? Yep. Yeah. yeah, those are the ones I bought from Lindcroft to, to do the. Um, Go, but oh, you're gonna go? Yeah. All right, cool. Have to look at your channel. It's awesome. <laughs> See ya. Uh, it's four. That's the one I want. Yeah. So Zana Fe, we're here in the workshop. We're just trying to get this together. Hopefully this is the right length that we are looking for. All right, we're just lacing like the first keel together just to see how it works. See if it's the right length, if it's the right length, cool. If it's not, then we need to adjust how long it is. But basically this needs to be done so that we can eventually like put that together in length. Right to left, left to right. Okay, that looks all right. Cool. Okay. Nice. Just pull that tight.
right to left. Right to right. looks really wide from what this is. Okay, and then finally, could be shorter actually. Right, very comfortably finished, enough to spare. Okay, cool. So that's the first lacing done with like about an inch of drop. It's gonna look like that. This could use a bit of tightening up. Okay. So we also found out that we could go a little more stingier on the lace because we have quite a bit on the end. So we can go with the shorter length, not that much shorter. Maybe if we lose about this much, we should be okay. So we're gonna go cut that amount of rope.
Okay, so we're going with the shorter length. So we've got one, two, just need one more. Maybe one more spare for the rest. Cool, got all links right. Okay, that's a temporary aglet that we can use. Whip a TV. Hey, man. How's How you doing, man? Mystic Dream of V. Hey, guys. How's the crafting going? Um, are you guys still around? Sorry about the delay. I just uh, was just focused in getting this, this across. Still guys around? I can explain. <gasps> We're doing all right. We're uh, working on... Uh, so we're not working on the original armor that we set out to do. So we did actually finish the, um, we did actually finish the chest plate for the, uh, the heavy combat, um, full contact armor. So the black armor, uh, we're working on a different set, which is entirely for, um, costuming and trading. Uh, how long ago is this? Yo. I'm getting nervous, man. Don't make me nervous. <sighs> Alright, it's making me nervous. I get anxiety, right? <laughs> just, just people, like, talk in the chat and then don't respond. I'm sad because I missed the message. Sorry, I was just lurking and working here. I am listening. Oh, okay, cool. What about Whipper TV? Did he already leave? Did he already leave? What you working on? Uh, roughly 
Uh, the day job. What's your day job? Because like, uh, I'm not at my day job. I wish I was, but this is more of a hobby thing when I have time. Can't support myself on my own hobbies just yet. I'm in the UK and the events coordinator. So just casually manage about a hundred training events. Ugh. Sounds gross. <laughs> training events for what? Uh, I'm imagining a whole lot of corporate stuff, like uh, how to how to uh, how to not catch viruses and uh, don't fall for emails that are obviously scams. I'm assuming it's that. It's more corporate stuff. Mental health and well-being training. Yeah. I have a lot of that going at my company as well. Um, we have like uh, daily meditation sessions that happen. So there's that. I don't know if you guys are doing that, but that's what we're doing at my company. Maybe it'll help you guys. Maybe it won't. We have like uh, organize like morning morning meditation sessions. So, train me in the art of uh, of uh, mental health well being. What is your go to instruction to be mentally fit? Wash your hands while singing happy birthday. Don't like strangers. Wash your hands while singing happy birthday. What? How is that supposed to help with mental health? If anything, it's, it makes you seem a little more crazy than before. Oh, I'm not a trainer. I click buttons and send emails. I'll ask my therapist. Okay, yeah. I'd say... <laughs> you know what that is? That you won't... You, you're not exactly describing... Most jobs can be described that way because all jobs use computers now. That's like a really vague way to describe the job. I just press buttons and the computer goes boop. Because technically that's what I do too. We have the same job. I don't know, man. Uh, you I just click buttons and the computer goes boop. I don't get why you have to sing happy birthday. I mean, like the CPR one makes sense. You know the CPR one? Like uh, to do chest compressions? You know the song for CPR, right? Literally, I have a queue of requests. They come in and I press a series of buttons that send a series of emails. Stand alive. It is stand alive. The hilarious one is another one bites the dust. It's the same beat. It's the same BPM. So you could sing another one bites the dust instead, which I think is dark and hilarious. Uh, do, do, do. Another one bites dust. Another one down, another one down, another one bites dust. Or sing the Weird Al Yankovic version. Another one rides the bus. Uh, one, down, another one down, another one rides the bus. Public transport. Public transport. Okay. Happy birthday thing is about the length and washing your hands should be about 20 seconds well it depends on how like how long the birthday verse is isn't it because like i hear there's more than one verse and it depends if you're like making fun of the person or not you know like uh you smell like a monkey and you look like one too Happy birthday to you, you're a hundred and two.
All right, I think that's really, that turned out pretty good. Okay, so that's the first layer, and then we're trying to move on to the other layers. So, got to get all of these, just poke them back out. Got to make sure these are flat too. Don't want no kinks here. This is a kink-free zone. That means no BDSM, no rope play. Oh, maybe some rope play, but generally we want things flat and straight. So no kinks. Yeah, one verse in the UK. Oh, the UK, where we all are prim and proper, and we make fun. We do not make jokes of anybody except Blackadder. He can make jokes of anybody he likes. So it won't be Blackadder doing the doing washing his hands. No, that would be far too inappropriate. Absolutely. <laughs> what, with the UK accent? Or maybe I am you. Maybe I'm from a parallel universe where you've been convicted of your crimes that, you know, people, the, the government still hasn't found out about. Um, oh, the Bobbies. Um, maybe this is a parallel universe and uh, you were convicted and sent to Australia for your crimes. And this is you on the other side. Thanks for, thanks for stealing those apples, by the way. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, like... Uh, <laughs> like, uh, oh, the humanity. You ever, get, you ever get the irony that, you know, the prison turns out to be better than where you were exported from? Because, like, uh, let's look at the facts, right? England is a really tiny country that rains a lot in the summer, whereas Australia is several times bigger. It's got beaches and sun, and it doesn't rain a lot. It's like an island paradise. And you decided this was the prison that you need to export your convicts to. How very prim and proper. Yes, yes. I see the logic, Giles. I had a very posh upbringing, but I have a su had a very po not posh upbringing, but a super posh voice. Ah. Oh yes, I absolutely remember the time my childhood. Oh, that brings me back. I was but a young lad on the estate, where the maids would serve me tea and crumpets. And my manservant would day, ask me on a daily basis, what is to be done with the exotic exports from Africa? Occasionally on fire, occasionally underwater. <laughs> only occasionally, only occasionally. Uh, did you come in with the raid from Whipper TV? Was that, or did you just randomly stumble upon, you know, this? Whipper TV, where are you? You asked me a question, and now I'm dying to answer you, but you're not here. He always keeps you waiting, that guy. Yeah, Whippy's, oh, Whippy's mod. Well, please moderate him and tell him that he's needed, his attention is needed here. Or at least tell him... My regards, thanks for the raid. I think it was a raid. I didn't see the notification because I'm um, multi streaming. So, what's going on now here? What's going on here? Here, we're lacing samurai armor. So, this is how like the armor is laced together. Um, so, that's what we're doing. Crafting's going well. We just ripped off all the old lace and we're putting in new stuff. So as you can see here, like we got more golden lace happening here and we got like the dirty lace up there. So we're replacing it slowly um, with the good stuff. The good stuff. Um, 
So we're doing it the proper way and we're doing the lacing the proper way. Um, I found that the, the lace is a tad too wide, which doesn't really lie flat, but it's still good lace. It's still newer lace. So we're relacing this properly. Um, it pains me to say that this particular uh, set is a Chinese knockoff, which it really is. Everything's made in China these days. And I can see all the cost cutting stuff they did, which was really disappointing. And that's why I spent most of my sessions just scraping it off. Um, but yeah, like, uh, feel free to ask questions. Uh, I won't be resetting after this. So we have seven minutes left. So get your questions in before I finish up for the night. You have the patience of a saint. Oh, I just did this before and it's always, actually, it's quite the opposite. I have no patience at all. Um, I always feel the need to be doing something. So... So I feel like I'm being productive whilst not being productive. You know what I mean? Feels, yeah. Feels like I'm doing something. Right, we're just lacing this through. I mean, like, uh, if I, if I was modding like you, I would also be like working on something else. So I would be watching the chat or at least watching Whipper's stream whilst also like knitting together chainmail. Just just got to multitask, man. Like there's not a lot there's not enough time to do everything. So you got to do everything at once. It's just how it is. Everything. Uh So the reason why we have masking tape on the ends of these rope uh, cords is so that they don't fray out and be weird. So we can easily just thread them through guilt-free without having to, having them like unwind on us, like unravel. Don't want any of that unraveling business. No, sir. Okay, uh, so I've got to make sure that it's at the proper depth, because otherwise it's pointless. It's kind of awkward, usually I do this all at once, but I wanted to get the right length of cord. So I needed to do one keel first, and we're trying to deal with the awkwardness of having like one side completed. And that's why this is hanging off like a maniac or a decapitated limb hanging by a thread, because it's literally hanging by a thread. Uh, so, but it kind of makes things awkward because like, this is fully attached and then we got to like work in between the awkwardness of how it hangs. So of just working on a fresh new start. Um, I don't know, like uh, Mis Mystic Dreamer, this is your first time here. I'm all about crafting and making things. So send my regards to Weapon TV. Thanks for the raid. I think it was a raid. Um, how's he doing? I haven't seen his uh, stream in a while. Still going strong? Will do. He probably wandered off to find food. Oh, yeah. He does that. He does that. We're telling the crafting is going well. Um, so I'll give you a quick update on what this is. So this is a, um, this is, so we're actually rebuilding, we're actually building two sets of armor. Um, one for costuming and training, because, uh, which is this one. This one will be costuming and training because it's lighter and it's lighter because the metal's thinner. And the metal's thinner because it was Chinese made and they don't want to use too much metal because it's cheaper. Emphasis on cheaper. It's not it's it's not that good quality steel because I found it rusting in places. 
which was pretty bad. In fact, it's still, it's still a layer of brown there, which I think I'll have to address because if you leave rust, it'll just come back like a cancer. So, um, so the update is I'm currently uh, working on a restoration job. So this arm I didn't build, I'm just restoring it because it's faster to restore than build from scratch. But it has its own issues. So this was a very beat up set. And so we beat out and straightened out the plates. Um, we're in the process of reforming the plates together today. So that's what's, what's going on right now. So we're working on the plate. So we've, we've, that we've flattened out the plates. We've patched up the holes. We resurfaced them and we also painted them. So that's this, uh, that's this one right here. So the, uh, the back armor right there. So we managed to resurface it and repaint it. So it doesn't have anything. Um, so it's all fixed up. So now we're tackling. So on the bottom of this, this uh, back plate, uh, we have uh, tassets hanging off, so hanging plates. Or as the Japanese say, kusazuri. Kusazuri. Um, but basically it's just tassets. So these are the plates that protect your joints, the, the, the leg joint between um, the torso and legs. So this, these hanging plates are designed to um, be, they just hang, obviously, as you can tell by the name, they just hang. And so you still have the mobility to move your legs, but it still offers a, a decent amount of protection for any, any swords that, you know, wander there. Um, swords, Usually, usually they try to aim for gaps in the armor and um, just below the breastplate. And I suppose since this is the back plate, these, these are the butt plates. These will be protecting your butt. So you could say we're covering our ass here. Um, so yeah, we're working on, our, we're, we're doing a restoration job so that we can, you know, just immediately start using this for training. And also out of COVID, We'll just wear it to every party we're invited to. Like, cause we put a lot of work into this. May as well just cash in. May as well cash in. All right, Reddit. Oh, what's the purpose of it? Yeah, training. So I just said that, so. So for training and for costuming purposes. Thanks for tuning in Reddit. If it does already like, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff, we will not be um, resetting. I'll be back here on Tuesday or streaming tomorrow at home at the same time. So see you later. Do, 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 do. Okay. Well, I want to get this fully laced before I pack up. Also, I need to do like something here in the space. Think you lurked before? Okay. Can't be on my first time, so you see you already follow. Wow. Okay. Well. Wow. Reddit's dead, so we'll just keep going. I want to finish this lacing. Um, also want to like uh, spray paint the end of this plate just a little bit, because it's not covered in the way I like. It's The ends are starting to rust, basically. And that's no good. Okay, I'm gonna check how how deep that hangs. Gotta constantly check this because if you do it too tight, um, like this left side, it's got too much. <sighs> yeah, this this is a bit too tight, so we gotta like loosen it up. This gotta loosen up these knots. Cause they're not hanging at the depth I want it to. It's 
kind of there, but all right, just gotta loosen up this as well. Okay, that's kind of at the depth I want it. So just undo this knot a bit. Okay, so that's the depth I want it. Line that up, tighten these. Okay. All right, that's, that's locked in. Okay, and then we just do the last knot over here. Since Feb? Wow, 2019. You've been following for a long time. I just didn't see you around ever. I think you hang around too much. You, I think I think you, you hang around a lot in Whipper TVs, possibly. But yeah, this is what I get up to. Just uh, just crafting away. I have a dream to wield katanas in full armor. It's not enough. There's not enough samurais in. Um, not enough samurais in. Uh, in the medieval scene here in Australia. Too many Vikings and too many knights. Got to balance that out a little with some Eastern medie medievalism. Eastern feudalism. It's not enough samurai representation here in Australia. We're so close to Japan and there's no one here who's, who's bothered to be samurai. I mean, like, here's a hot take. The Americans, like, nuked the crap out of Japan so hard that they're now prim and proper and can't, can't essentially be bold anymore. So they got the, they got the samurai spirit and nuked the crap out of them. They nuked the samurai spirit out of them. That's the, that's the hot take. So that's why nowadays you don't see any, um, they're all polite, friendly, not at all bold and individualistic at all because they got all of that nuked out of them which is why not none no no japanese anymore would like do this kind of thing especially not in australia because they would feel unwelcome if they would ever like do that so it's up to me to do this samurai thing and not have let the uh not let all the vikings and all the knights have all the fun they're either vikings knights or templars that's that's it that's all you will find at um medieval fairs in australia so i will i will be the only samurai there but it'll be worth because finally we get some representation all right we're almost there so okay just gotta work on that depth it's, it's pretty there. Yeah, you're never here. Sorry, I've been modding three Aussies. Ah, it's cool, dude. But could you mod four Aussies? <laughs> I'm joking. You have enough on your plate. And modding is hard. Personally, like, I would be bored out of my mind. And all the popular streamers don't need more mods. And what is a mod anyway? Just, uh, it's a lot of work. All right, cool. Cool. All right, just gotta lace this last thing. And we're out of here. It was good talking to you, Mystic. Hope to see you again. Hopefully you won't be too busy not to visit. Hopefully you'll be free enough to visit. Hopefully you're not too busy. This is Mystic TV. This is Mystic Dreamer TV. From the other side. Because this is how I sound like, apparently. I have an extremely posh voice. 
but somehow originating from Australia. For I do not like coffee, because coffee is a vile tonic. Only tea. Only tea. All right, we're almost done here. Sweet. That's the game. I'm going to be spending a lot of time like relacing the stuff, but we're finally in a place where we're able to do this. Okay. Boom. Laced armor. Done. I'm just got to cut all this crap off. I'm leaving it on so I can like study how to do this with the proper lace, but done. Um, probably just need to retouch the, the, the rust here on the bottom. It's so gross. It's like, why are all bad things brown? Rust is brown, shit is brown. I'll let you figure out the rest. Okay, might have to repaint that. But that's it. We just gotta do three more sets and we're good. So save that till next time. Really enjoy it. It's actually more of a vibe, but like three more seriously. Oh, really enjoy this. We'll try to get around more for another 18 months pass. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. I know, right? Like, geez, what have you been doing? Simping, simping for Whipper TV, no less. Such a Whipper TV simp. What a simp. I hope to see you again. Um, we, it's uh, we, it's usually a lot of grunt work, but we're finally able to do the cool stuff, like actually lacing it together and seeing how it hangs. Um, I'm not happy that you know the cords don't lie flat, but because because the cords are like super thick, I mean like super wide, we can't really avoid that. So. Um, but anyway, like all we got to do now is just tie off, tie off these and just glue them behind this plate. So, you know, basically it'll look like that. Um, but that's pretty much done, but we have like three more sets to do, but we'll leave those to another day. Um, so thanks for watching. I uh, hope to see you again. Uh, mystic dreamer. Crap's meant to be brown. I thought the glowing green color was the sign of health. Oh yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Like you're fine, you're fine. So much simping, dude. So easy to sim for. All right, sleep well. All right. Um, good luck with training. Good luck with sending all those emails. Don't don't blow up the server. We'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging around, Mystic. You can give um, you can give uh, Whipper TV the uh, the updates. I'm doing fine. Uh, just. We're restoring some armor, basically. Um, I have other updates, but I'll save it for another time. So yeah, well, that's it. See you later.